It's Wednesday, you know what that means, another Magician 101, the show for all magicians. We have a lot of great questions this week, so we're going to jump right into them. And the first question comes from Perry. Thanks again, Bob. Uh, this week I was wondering what street magic tricks you've got, and if Function 9 by Kayla Morelli seems like a good DVD set. I checked out Function 9, and yes, it looks like a really cool DVD set with some really visual magic on there. Uh, there was one trick that I, I really liked on the DVD set where it was uh, he put a pen inside of a full water bottle. Uh, that looked really cool, and I would want to get the DVD set just to learn that one because that looked really awesome. Uh, but there's some other really cool magic on there as well, and from the reviews that I was reading, People say they really like that DVD set. So there's like nine tricks on there. So I recommend going to, to get that if you're thinking about getting that because it looks really cool. Uh, um, and, he, and Perry's also wondering what street magic tricks I've got. Uh, I did a Magical Mondays. I'm going to link that Magical Mondays in the description down below. So click on that video in the description and you can check out um, my entire 30-minute street magic uh, show that I did. So you can check that out, and I did it right against the street magic backdrop there. So definitely check that out. All right, The Magician PR says, What are your favorite close-up tricks, and what do you think about the classified case from Magic Geek? All right, uh, the classified case, you know, I thought about it, and there's some good and some bad things about it. There is a lot of pockets in the top to hold all of like your pens and your TTs you could hold up in there. Uh, your rope could go in there. So there's a lot of pockets in the top and they're all little individual pockets too. It's not like it's one giant one. Um, there's also the, that, that little top part can come out and you can hold your flat items. Like if you have an envelope with a prediction in it, such as the celebrity smart ass trick, you have an envelope and you have a prediction in there, or like uh, the fortune teller prediction or something like that, um, you can put those in there. And uh, so that comes out. And there's also little foam, uh, the whole entire bottom of the case is foam. So you can put props in there and it's foam and all that great stuff. So you can like customize the compartments. The only, uh, one of the bad things about it to, to me, well, two bad things is it doesn't come with a stand. You gotta build in your own stand. There's other cases out there that are a little bit more money, but come with a stand. So you can have your own stand, you can set it up. Um, I use, <coughs> I can't show it to you right now. <laughs> Excuse me, can't show it to you right now because I have my camera sitting on it. But it's my um, uh, briefcase table by JL. I use that in all of my, in my uh, shows. When I do close up and I do the farmer's market, I use it and put all my props in there. It's nice because it's like a makeshift table as well as a place to hold all of your stuff. So you can't do that with the classified case. Though Chris does talk about it in one of the past weekly recaps, he did say, you know, you can put legs and a base on it, but you have to do a lot of work. And there's some cases that come pre-made. And also the price, uh, because I've heard some magicians say they can find that same case at like Tar at like Target or Walmart or Home Depot for like 20 bucks. So the price is bad. But other than that, I think it's a really cool looking case. And it comes, if you buy it from Magic Geek, you get it uh, DV, uh, like a little video file that tells you how to set up your uh, case, which is kind of cool. All right, my favorite close-up tricks. Um, I love Forced Outcome. That's one of my favorite ones. It's the Chris Ballinger Instant Download. You can go download that for $4.99. Really steal of a deal, and it's a really great trick. Um, I love also Flash by Chad Long with the USB drives and Angry Sponges, another really good one that I really like. Um, I think your I think audiences love that. And sponge ball routines in general are really cool for um, close-up. A lot of people like that. All right, Caleb Casper has the final questions. Hey, Bob, how did you get into magic? All right, this is kind of a long, drawn-out story, but when I was four years old, I saw a Penn & Teller special on TV. Penn & Teller, back in the uh, early 90s, did a lot of specials on TV. Um, and so I watched Penn & Teller do a special, and you know I just sat there and I watched the whole thing when I was four years old. Though I could sit and watch any TV show, any age that I was. I'd sit and watch my favorite movie, The Wizard of Oz, when I was two, and I'd watch the whole thing. 
Um, but I watched Penn and Teller, and then I used to go to my local brick and mortar magic shop, Barry's Magic Shop. And I used to go there when I was five, six, seven, and and, it, and all the way up till they closed. Uh, when I was seven or when eight, I think it was I think it was when I, when I was eight. Barry Taylor came to my house to do my birthday party when I was eight. And when I was sitting there watching him, I knew that was something I was going to want to do when I got older. And then, you know, I started doing magic. And then a best friend of mine, who's actually a neighbor of mine as well, she lives like behind me and down the street a little bit. She sent me uh, two YouTube videos to uh, a couple of Bill Malone tricks. And one of them was Stan the Bellhop. And I sat there and I was like, you know, I could do that. So I grabbed a deck of cards and I learned how to do it over this YouTube video. It wasn't a tutorial. I just watched his performance over and over again until I got it. And I showed my family and they got really big reactions. And that made me think even more that, hey, I want to do this magic thing. And then I started getting, and then I went to Barry's Magic Shop, got a few of those, you know, really, really kind of, um, easy tricks like the magic coloring book, a change bag, that kind of thing. Uh, though I did learn the coloring book, I think, um, before I learned Sam the Bellhop. But anyways, I got some easy tricks like a change bag and some things to do with a change bag, like a mismade flag. And, you know, and then I started doing more magic. I started learning more card tricks from people off YouTube, like, um, almost like Miss Mag H YouTube, but there were like just random people I learned some card tricks from. Started doing them more to people and then I really got into the magic thing. I found Magic Geek and started buying more tricks and and now here I am today doing performing all across Maryland and doing birthday parties and uh, farmers markets and close up shows and festivals and fairs and, and all that kind of stuff performing and I love it. All right. Caleb Casper says, and who inspires you the most in magic? There is uh, two people who inspire me the most. One is my audience because, you know, audiences, when I see them smile or I see them laugh at a joke or they just love a trick, that inspires me to go out and keep practicing and keep doing what I love to do. I know magicians say that their audiences inspire them, but it is true. If you do any kind of performing, your audiences are really going to inspire you. And other magicians inspire me. Not one magician in particular, but I love going out and watching other magicians perform. Uh, I go out some Friday nights and I, there's a local kind of magic club. I don't want to say it's a club, but what it is, it's a group of magicians. I talked about them before. The name, the, the name of it's the Comedy and Magic Society. And they meet up in, uh, in Kentlands. And uh, that's in, that's a, like a sub town of Gaithersburg, Maryland. And they go and they meet up and they do this, um, magic show and they bring in magicians from all across the country. Also local magicians as well. Four people, uh, uh, Brian Curry, Mark, uh, Mark Phillips, Bob Sheets, you might know him. And uh, Barry Wood, they are the the uh, producers of the show, and they bring in a bunch of people from all across uh, the country and, and locally as well, like Peter Wood of Shazam Magic, and they bring in Jonathan Burns, and uh, they brought in some other people as well, and they just perform once a month every or once once a Friday every month, and I love going out and watching them because it really inspires me to come back home and practice and and to go out and and, and look for more gigs and do more shows. All right, sorry about the long-winded response there to that question, but there's a lot to say about those two. All right, Caleb also wants to know, just one more question. What's your favorite sponge trick, and who is your favorite old legend magician? All right, favorite sponge trick. I have two. One of them is the angry sponges. Love it. My spectators love it because I always pick some, you know, young person in the crowd, and I say, you look like you play a lot of video games. And they'll usually say yes. It's like, you look like you play Angry Birds a lot. And then I'll go into the whole spiel about it being 3D Angry Birds, the latest app in the App Store. And then I'll pull out the red bird from the phone using the picture off the phone. If you have the trick, you know that Chris says you can uh, download these, this picture on your phone and make the red bird pop out. So I do that and I do the whole Angry Sponge thing. The other one I really like to do is I take and do the eeny, meeny, miny, mo sponge ball trick. I think that was number day, I think that was day 12 or 13. It was it was an, it was the first sponge ball trick I did for the 365 day magic challenge. Go check that out because it's really fun. I do that a lot too. And I do that as my opening trick as well where I do like street magic and that kind of thing. I'll use that. And my favorite old legend magician, I know this is kind of like, um, 
It's kind of cliche, but Harry Houdini. Uh, Houdini was a really great escape artist, and he really was, he had a really good stage presence. Because sometimes, you know, he'd be shackled and bound with handcuffs and, and chains and that kind of thing. And sometimes it would take him over an hour to escape, and people would sit there and stay and watch it. Now, if it took you an hour to escape chains or shackles nowadays, your audience would leave within the first ten, within the first probably two, five minutes. So back then, people would sit and watch Houdini because they knew they were going to witness something cool. So Houdini was really cool. And most people don't know this, but Houdini actually did other magic tricks besides escape. He was actually the king of cards back when he was a magician. He knew how to do card tricks, too, which some people don't know that about him. All right, so that's Magician 101 for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to post your questions down below for next week. Also, I don't have any questions for trick questions tomorrow. We're talking about um, the fortune teller prediction, so make sure to leave your questions over there uh, on trick questions so I can answer some tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching this video, and I will see you next time for Magician 101. Do you know how to mix up cards? You say, you are not cards. You are not cards. You get the, the two tubes and you get a certain amount of bottles. Let me grab one of the bars. A little bit more in the way of not really sleight of hand. It requires more remember. It actually looks. It looks like you're actually uh, taking and shuffling the cards.